Hey Tantan here, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I have been considering for a while to recreate my Unity Voxel RPG game to recreate it without a game engine. With Rust! No, hear me out, okay? Okay, listen, 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 listen a little bit. Okay, so here's the thing. I was working on this voxel game for quite some time, but over time it became harder and harder to work with. Because it was harder to work with, my motivation for this project dwindled. The code was progressively turning into spaghetti. I like spaghetti, don't get me wrong, but not this kind. <laughs> Look at that class, I mean, that doesn't make any sense! Wanting to progress with the game as fast as possible, so I have content to show in my videos, resulted in me taking any shortcuts I could find. I end up writing unoptimized bad code because it is fast and easy to do, and in the end, it ends up harder to work with. Enter Rust, my current favorite programming language. It is hard to take shortcuts in Rust. The language is designed in a way that you have to be thoughtful in how you manage your memory and also ownership of that memory. I wanted to see if Rust is a viable option for me to recreate my voxel game in, so I decided to see if I am skilled enough to create 3D voxel generation without a game engine. Is engineless a viable option for me? Let's find out! You may or may not have heard of OpenGL DirectX or Vulkan. This are libraries designed to communicate with the GPU. If you wanna draw things to the screen, the computer has to do a lot of calculations. Every single mesh, every single pixel has to be calculated and graphics cards are specialized in crunching this type of data. If you're using a game engine, you don't need to know how it works behind the scenes, but I'm building this from scratch using Rust, so I need to level up my graphics programming skills. This is kind of a continuation of the video where I started learning OpenGL again. I feel like this is my next natural step in improving my graphics programming knowledge, creating a voxel engine. I really need to understand the rendering pipeline and really get out of the tutorial zone. So I started out by following a tutorial. Hey, it's a good reason, okay? I wanted to try out WGPU-RS, beautiful name by the way. It's a graphics API for Rust that works with any rendering API backend. I found a tutorial that piqued my interest, and looking into the repository, I saw that they had a lot of example code. This will be my fifth time I'm following a tutorial from start to finish, starting with drawing triangles on the screen, to loading a 3D model, to camera transition, to adding lights, mesh instancing. I did the whole freaking tutorial, and it took me about a week. But it was at this point, graphics programming really started to make sense to me. I did run into two issues in this tutorial. I had this annoying flickering effect and I couldn't figure out why that happened. Well, switching the rendering API backend from Vulkan to DirectX 12 magically fixed it. Now I didn't bother to investigate exactly why that happened. It's probably an issue with the library, but yeah, I just continued on like nothing happened. The other roadblock in the tutorial I had was with some shader code. In the tutorial they use a function called inverse, and when I did so, the shader just didn't compile when I tried to use it. Trying to investigate it, it was really hard to find information on why this didn't work. So I did something different. The solution I went with was actually suggested in the tutorial. It was not to calculate the matrix in the shader, instead passing the matrix from the CPU to the shader via uniform. As I'm editing this video, they just updated 15 hours ago the tutorial. They now tell us that this function doesn't actually exist in WGSL. So it was not a frictionless experience going through this tutorial, but I'm glad I did because after leaving Tutorial Island, entering unknown territory, this is what I was able to make. Getting close. Sweet, we got a chunk. Let's go. What's going on? How many meshes am I drawing at this moment? So how did I go from following a rendering tutorial to then making a working procedurally generated voxel engine? Well, the rendering part isn't actually the hard part. So if you know how to draw a mesh, well, you should be able to draw more meshes. The hard part is constructing the mesh and that is all about dealing with data. How do I generate the data and how do I process it so that in the end we get a mesh? 
I had a lot of vague knowledge on how this works before going into this, thanks to consuming probably every Voxel Engine video that is out there. I have seen a lot of these videos. But when it came to implementing it myself, I had a very valuable source of knowledge. The voxel game I was working on previously. Now, I didn't make the world generation code. I bought it from the Unity Asset Store. This library is called Fast Noise. And the source code for how the world generation works, well, it's right there in the library. And I don't think I can show that for legal reasons, so I'm showing my code here in the background. I had this as a reference writing my own voxel engine. Of course I paid for it, but there are probably thousands of free code examples of world generation you can find. Having a reference is very valuable. I started out with trying to generate a chunk with blocks. Uh, there's something wrong with how I'm processing the data. Meh. But we're getting there, we're getting there slowly but surely. Good morning, it is in the morning. It's time to figure out what is wrong with my chunks with the chunks. Uh, look at here. This side is completely fine, but this side doesn't generate the outer faces. A block is just a value. Is it solid or is it empty? Technically it's not a boolean, but that doesn't really matter. I started out by randomizing all of the blocks in a chunk and trying to write an algorithm that can generate a mesh from this array of voxels. If a block is solid then we should generate a face. But if we had a block right before this one, creating that face would be unnecessary. So the way the algorithm works is that it samples neighboring blocks. Doing that we can make sure that we only place faces where the block ends. Now completely randomizing blocks doesn't create these caves or landscape-like shapes. To generate the cave structures, I'm sampling a 3D Perlin noise using the voxel coordinate as input. The output Perlin value is used to determine if a block is solid or an air block. By changing the threshold, we can have a tighter cave or a much open cave. To create a landscape, I only sample the X and Z position and the Perlin value is used to decide what the height is. If the voxel's y position is below this height, then it's solid, otherwise it's an air block. So now we know how to create a mesh, but we need a system to load all of these chunks in. This is how it works currently. Using the camera's position, we can find all of the closest chunks and check is this chunk loaded. If it's not, then we will put it into a queue. When we want to create the meshes for the chunks, we get all of the chunk positions from this queue and run the mesh generation for that chunk. Figuring out how to write the code for this would have taken me a really long time, but thanks of having source code of another voxel generation library, the process in building this was pretty smooth. Of course, building all of this requires a lot of trial and error. And I wanna say voxel generation took me about a week of work, probably a little bit more. That's how everything works in a nutshell. I will leave a lot of resources down below if you're interested in how all of this works. Articles, videos, things like that, check it out in the description. Okay, so what's next? Well, I had a really fun time working on this project and I definitely want to continue this and improve on it. Something I haven't looked into at all is optimizing the code. Nothing is multi-threaded at the moment and there's a lot of rendering optimizations I can try out. My plan with all of this is to keep working on this and see how far I can take it. The source code for this project is publicly available on GitHub. I will not accept any pull requests because I want to keep this code sacred. It's my first voxel generation application. But I'm making the source code public so you can see how it was made. I'm sure pretty much all of this code will change as I continue improving on it, but I will continue with this in a private repository. So am I really remaking my game in Rust? Well, do I have to decide? Well. Let's just start with simple voxel generation and see if I want to take it further when I have delved a little bit deeper into this. I really enjoy coding in Rust. So much in fact that I thought it was worth to see if I'm capable to do this. And I'm starting to think I might be. In the end, whatever state this program ends up being, a demo, a game, at least I have something cool to show and I have learned a lot of things building this. And the most important part, I had a lot of fun. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and stay tuned for more content. Let's see how far we can take this. This has been Tantan and I'm out. Bye!